Jay Remy here, host of No Outlet Live. Are you considering or curious about how you can start your own podcast? Join Anchor. Anchor has everything you need to make a podcast for free. Monetize your podcast, one-click distribution, record from anywhere on the app, and they have unlimited free hosting. Download Anchor on the App Store or Google Play. Anchor, podcasting made easy. Guardian Roadside Solutions is ready to help with your roadside emergencies serving the greater Cleveland area. They have the knowledge and experience to get you back on the move quickly with staff available 24-7 to help with flat tires, tire damage, changes, fuel delivery, vehicle lockouts, dead battery, or new battery installs. If you find yourself or someone you know in this situation, call a Guardian at 440-833-6000. We're dying, driving like we stole the damn thing. We're all drained and damaged, but God damn it, I love it. God damn it, I love it, and we deserve to be loved a hell of a lot more than we've been here. Yet most days I can't even look at myself in the mirror. I feel so small in this city. Yeah, I feel so ugly in this world. Please accept us how we are. Just accept us how we are. Do you see what's wrong with everything in this place? Or is it just me? Skin from its skeleton 
break apart every bare bone. Use my hair as your kindling. And make my insides your home. You're never alone. Let live. If you're in a podcast that explore any and everything, check us out. We stream anywhere you listen or watch podcasts, or just type No Outlet Live one word in your Google search bar to find the show. Live Saturdays at 7 p.m. Eastern Time on Facebook. No Outlet Live, your road to boredom ends here. Do you like Tessa? Do you think this will be a date that can last? Well, uh, she's not very articulate. Are you looking for a place to have custom t-shirts made for your business? Well, we have the place for you. Flathouse Press works with 100% eco-friendly material for all of you conscious folks. They can also put out orders in a fraction of the time large-scale competitors can. They are a fun, locally grown Cleveland original company. Go to flathousepress.com and check out the variety of party toys, headbands, and clothing in their catalog. No Outlet Live with your favorite hosts on the North Coast, Jeremy Tomasek and Jared Stover. The road to boredom ends here. No Outlet, but I need to charge my phone. No Outlet Live. Welcome back. It's No Outlet Live, the best live podcast you'll find on Facebook Live. You can call the number at 216-647-0064 and we can talk to you on the show. We are presented by FlathousePress.com and Guardian Roadside Solutions. If you're stuck on the side of the road and you need some help in the Cleveland area, call a Guardian. You can find the show everywhere that you listen or watch podcasts. I'm not going to go through the whole spiel. Your boy, Jeremy Tomasek, the, your favorite host on the North Coast, like you just heard Tank Smasher say. And I am accompanied by my boy, Jared Stover. What up, what up? What's good? It is July 8th. Saturday, 2023. We got a whole lot of fun news and all that stuff. I do not have a guest for you today, but we do have a little bit that we could uh, talk about in the meantime. Uh, I'm hoping that anybody that uh, is watching or will watch later on, you had seen our previous uh, installment or our guest spots on the Lex Vegas show via Redline Radio. We had a really good time, and that uh, shit was a blast for sure, <laughs> dude. It was it was pretty crazy, wasn't it? <laughs> it's crazy talking to people that don't really understand you. <laughs> <They're> like, <laughs> What's going on here? Like they're like, damn, <laughs> these damn crazy whites. <laughs> yeah, right. Like we were definitely out of our element, but I think we did all right for sure. Yeah, we definitely did. And you, <laughs> you know, if you go back and you watch that episode, if you go to Redline Radio on uh, YouTube, or you go to the Lex Vegas Show on Facebook or YouTube, wherever you find uh, their the Redline Radio material, you'll get to see a lot more about uh, the personal stuff between me and my co-host, and uh, you'll get to see uh, things that I never really talked about on this show, and uh, you get a little feel of where I come from, where you come from, and yes. it's it's a good taste of who we are. Right. Actually, somebody asking us who we are instead of us just telling stories and stuff. Like, yeah. You know, it's a little <laughs> different in that sense, I guess, like... Yeah, yeah, it, it really, uh, it, it, it's different being interviewed. I'm not really super used to that because now I'm going on uh, two years of doing this show and I did have gaps in between, but I'm usually used to um, interviewing others about themselves and I do try to stray away from all of my uh, outside of No Outlet Live stuff. 
Uh, and maybe you shouldn't. Maybe you should be telling people who you are so that they can have a better understanding, you know, for for the show. Like, so they know when they're listening, they feel, excuse me, they feel like you're genuine. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, it It just it, it feels weird. I have had moments, like a lot of people have seen uh, my alter ego from uh, local radio shows. I have played the stuff and clips on this show, but really getting into like uh who i am and where i'm from and like right. my upbringing and stuff i never really talk too much about it because i'm past that i mean i'm are you past it or do you feel like ashamed by it so you're not gonna relive it you know what i'm saying that's actually kind of a good point i i i would say i'm 50 50 i'm a little ashamed by yeah uh where i came from and who i who just, i used to be just scarred from it all and you're like i'm gonna leave that behind me now i'm just gonna be cool i'm like scar from the lion king y'all don't know that i killed my brother i threw him off of a mountain and Damn. uh when he was holding on by one hand i grabbed it and i was like you a little bitch <laughs> and i fucking <laughs> i let him fall Is that what scar said i don't know if that's exactly his exact words but i guess i'm like, pretty sure that's what happened paraphrasing. Lion king. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not a paraphrase. Uh, that was exact. Like, I, I think that's that verbatim. was exact quote. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, I haven't seen that scene. That must be deleted. <laughs> yeah, that was one of the deleted scenes. You, you got to buy the DVD for you that. You only one. get that on the hood tapes. <laughs> <laughs> when you get that from the uh, the junkies outside of the liquor store, yes. <laughs> the <laughs> bootleg. <laughs> they ask you for like uh, fifty cents so they can get a single cigarette, and they're like, "Hey, I also got these uh, Lion Kings." Right. <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell you the last time that I bought a, a single cigarette. I I can't tell you the last time I bought a bootleg. Oh, dude, you know what? That's actually a really good point. You know, bootlegs, they, they died out a little bit because of Not how widespread little. the internet. But there is still, like, bootlegging via internet. Like, isn't the... Uh, uh, yeah, like, kind of like LimeWire type stuff. Like well, the Fire torrent. Stick. Yeah, all Fire Stick, too, yeah. But does that get, like, all... Is there things that make you get all movies that aren't out yet still? Yeah, or? the Fire Stick, you have access, like, all access to everything. Has that gotten better? Because I feel like the reason I didn't like the Fire Stick was that it always had... You had to pick... From 30 different websites to find some bootleg Japanese version that has, like, subtitles and shit. Well, uh, the last... I do have one here, but I think I lost, like, one or two of the cords to it. But uh, you have to consistently update these things, and you have to, like, research YouTube and find the whole fucking... The, the whole thing that you... It's such a hassle that I just gave up on Fire Stick. That's why I did, too. That's why I was asking if it got better than that. Because, like, if it didn't, I don't think that technology was ever going to last. No, it won't. But there, I'm sure there will be a new and improved one coming soon. There always is. There's always hack, somebody upping it. backdoor. Like, <laughs> like, I feel like, um, you know, sometimes, like, uh, UFC fights, for example, uh, a lot of people, they... Uh, They'll they'll pull out their gaming controllers, right? Okay. And they'll do a live stream on like Twitch or uh, you're on TikTok or whatever, and you'll be watching actual live the new uh, the the current uh, pay per view, but right. it looks like they're playing the video game, and a lot of people got away with that for a moment. Uh, so it looks like they're playing the UFC like video game but they're actually watching the fight and that's how they're getting away i don't understand exactly that's what they're doing oh, they, so they, saying, they're trying to understand that they're mimicking <laughs> like they're they're looking like they're playing the game yeah and you know it's so that that is a big oh that's actually part genius. of streaming yeah. so they're like oh yeah you know i'm streaming my gameplay right but they're actually like you're seeing this dude just fuck around with the controller and then you're watching the actual live uh, pay-per-view for free. The fight for free for everybody. Yeah, gotcha. but I think they did end up cracking down on that. I'm sure they would, because that probably wouldn't be that probably wouldn't be easily looked over, you know. Especially like we can't even get anything past like YouTube algorithm. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure they're watching that shit. I just don't understand why a lot of these things aren't already free because, uh, you know, in this day and age. Uh, the person, your neighbor, could be making thousands of dollars off of OnlyFans. Right. Or uh, making X-rated videos on whatever uh, service that they upload to. 
and that stuff's all free, but these people are making money hand over fist. Well, yeah, because they're selling, like, ads and, like, you know, they have sponsors and shit like that. Like, some of these chicks got their butthole sponsored. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, they got, like, a, the Netflix tag right by the b-hole. <laughs> uh, yeah, like, I seen it. I'm not lying to you. Like, you're, you're like what is that even there? I, <laughs> Man, you know how many Hulu stickers I done licked? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Shit, I want to. Most of the time, it's just licking my screen. Damn. <laughs> no, you and me both, bro. I ain't kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. So, yeah, we had a long week. Uh, me and Jared, we, uh, me and you have been discussing a lot of things about how we're going to update this show. And there there are uh, changes that are coming up in this future of uh, No Outlet Live. We'll be making... Uh, Subtle changes in a long term window that you guys will be seeing, and we'll be introducing them one at a time and kind of working it. And uh, we we are going to keep you guys with some of the same segments, some of my old seg- uh, segments we will be bringing back, but in the meantime, we're kind of like crunching out uh, the new niche of the show, and we actually had a, a game plan that I am super excited to bring to the forefront of this show you guys will see it changes in our commercials and the way that the show has started our intros uh going to break and all that stuff and big shout out to um church boy uh For sure <laughs> you you came in and were you were uh you, you were a wildfire when you came into the noella live studio and uh congratulations on your new podcast that you can find on Redline Radio or whatnot, and uh, is yeah. that tomorrow at seven? They said uh, I, Sunday I believe, nights at seven. I, I think. Well, I'm, I don't want to say or not say, but I'm pretty sure when we were there, that's what he said at the end of the show. Okay, like, well, I'll, I'll take your word for it, but I'm also like, uh, don't take our word for it. I'm not yeah. exactly positive. I will confirm that we are not uh, a source. We are just. Uh, giving you secondhand information that could not be true. That's what we do around here. <laughs> we fly Probably by the seat true, of our but... pants. <laughs> <laughs> and the seat of my pants might have my fly open. What? On the seat of your pants? What are you, you got crisscross jeans right now? <laughs> yeah, I always wear my clothes backwards because I'm slightly for, retarded. For easy access. It's not a retarded, <laughs> retarded thing. Like You're just hoping somebody unzips that bad boy. <laughs> no, it's for easy access to take a fat shit. <laughs> oh, yeah, through your zipper? Like, that wouldn't be good. <laughs> <laughs> my wiping technique has gotten very critical <laughs> on bat like you know <laughs> yeah accurate <laughs> <laughs> oh shit so yeah shout out to everybody that's uh out there and tuning in and everyone that we do have coming i do have uh a guest coming in next week somebody that i, I had just released music a new song that i did with a new artist i'm working with He's uh he's kind of um he's inspiring me back into the music scene for a long time. I did do music. I was a hip hop artist, a producer, an audio engineer. I did all these things before I jumped in to the podcasting world that was like my entire life for uh, uh well over a decade is what I did. That's actually how I met you. Yes. And that is. uh you know, RNL Dame he will be in next week, and I'm really excited. You guys will – I'll show you some of his music before the show starts. And then, uh, I don't know, maybe we'll try to uh, play some of my older stuff, uh, a song we just discussed earlier, and the one that I had just done called uh, Scariest. If you go to my Instagram at Jeremy M. Tomasek, you see my name on the screen right there. Yep. Uh, just look me up on Instagram, and you can find a cut of that song. And uh, I would like to really start promoting and showing uh, my musical talents uh, as well as while I'm getting back into the music scene or uh, the comedy scene. And speaking of comedy, um, on next month, August 19th, I will be on the next unapologetic show with Lex Vegas and friends. He's got a lot of people that he's always booking. He does it once a month. And it's always a tough crowd, but I'm used to it. I'm not scared of a tough crowd. 
Uh, I think because you're just used to bombing. You're like, whatever. It couldn't go worse than it has been. It's it's only up from here, baby. <laughs> right now, I'm shooting 50-50. My, uh, my, my percentage, my kill-death ratio is uh, 50-50. I, I, I have really good shows under my belt, but every time that I did my best comedy, my comedic performance... Nobody was there to see it. No, <laughs> no. There was like every... All of my good ones had good crowds, but my camera guy never showed up. And you guys know who that is. Be nice. He was on the show on episode uh, 40 or 39, I believe. And uh, he, he missed out on some of my best performances. And uh, I I need you back, B. You need to come back, bro. Right. We need you. We need you, daddy. <laughs> Puppy, <laughs> come back. <laughs> I, I don't know about all that, but uh, just come back, sir. We, we appreciate you here. Yeah, I need you to come out on uh, 8 19, August 19th, 2023. And then uh, in on November 13th, I will be at Saucy Brew Works in Mayfield. I can't remember. Or no, that's Orange. For some reason, they call that orange. I, it's such a small section of an area, but it's right outside of Mayfield Heights, uh, Ohio. You could come out there and see me. Uh, I think that show starts at 7 p.m. or so. I will give you updates when it's closer to November. That's a little ways out. But until then, you know, we're sticking with the No Outlet Live stuff. And Is anyone going to show up there? Because I feel like I've lived in May Mayfield Heights for the last three years, and I have no clue where that's at. Like, what Have you it? never been to uh, that plaza over by uh, uh, Saucy Brew Works? Like, yeah, I think... Um, See, I don't even know where Saucy Brew Works is over there. It's a pretty cool. Like, it's a bar slash pizza shop. And right. Well, I know what Saucy Brew Works is. I've been to the one downtown and everything, like... What what is the the place where everybody gets their corned beef in on St. Louis downtown? Uh, Slimans. Slimans. There's a new Slimans and uh, Saucy Brew Works is at a plaza right by that area. Gotcha. I might have to go check that out. I didn't know it existed. Dude, that plaza is so cool because there's all. It's like a huge shopping center and it's very like a. I don't know. It's a beat. It seems like a. What is it? What it? I've been awake <laughs> so long. Like, I've gotten very little sleep this week, so I do apologize when I'm, like, spacing out. Um, the, um, what, are they, what did they say happened to, like, Brooklyn and the Bronx when uh, the hipsters came in? They gentrified it. Gentrified. It's, like, a very gotcha. gentrified area. It's, like, very hipster-esque, and uh, it's a really nice area. I like it. It wasn't there for the longest time, and then it seemed to have popped up out of Maybe nowhere. Maybe that's why I didn't know it. Like, Dude, it uh, really is the case. I'm not gentrified enough. Yeah, I mean, we're 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 hip, but we're not hipsters. We're not allowed in those neighborhoods yet. No, <laughs> no not yet. They're trying to keep the riffraff out. You know? We got kicked out of the cookout <laughs> with, with, with our boy Lex and Church Boy. They we're don't not want... allowed in many places no more. <laughs> we're, we're, we're not allowed anywhere. You you are damn right. You know, when I, I went and picked us up, uh, I... We went and got pizza earlier. When I walked in, everybody stopped and he went. <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> We're not allowed out of the furniture room. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Dude, you got to let old dogs die. Why no, are you I'll doing never this let to that me? die. That, like, that's just going to be what it is. I've never heard anything funnier in my life. Big shout out to Trent Brown. Yes, sir. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure he's still in Baltimore. If you're not, I can't wait for your return. But uh, until then, we do have some other stuff that we'll be getting to. Um, what do you feel, Jared? Do you think we should touch on a little news or you want to get into a little video early? We go with whatever you want. Hit some news stories, like videos. You know, I'm just, I'm still half drunk. Like I'm like day hangover <laughs> drunk. So just hit me with it. We'll see what happens. All right. So I think we're going to, what we'll do is we'll check out a little bit of news. Uh, let me open up. Email you could email us at noaletlive at yahoo.com and don't forget, like, uh, the phone lines are open. You can call the show at 216 647 0064. We could use somebody to speak to about some of these subjects. Um, let me start with uh, let's go into Trump. We got the always 2024 got, election, always good for entertainment, always you know? good for entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> you are spot on with that. So the Washington Examiner says the push to do the no thank you 
uh, the push to disqualify Trump from the 2024 election using the 14th Amendment. They are shutting him out and they're finding any way to keep him from in this race because I feel like, you know, I, I hear this a lot. I, I'm a big uh, podcast watcher. <clears throat> I consume podcasts most of my week. And, uh, you know, the, the going thing I feel like everyone is realizing is that Biden will not be able to uh, debate. Yes. Well, that's the problem, though, because Democrats know that they can't win if it, it doesn't almost matter who runs against them. They just can't stand to see Trump in there. You know what I'm saying? So they're going to try to make it so it's somebody else. But I don't think it's a Democrat. And if it is, then I believe Trump. And I think this shit is red because this dude is insane. Like He does seem very fraudulent. Yeah. He seems like he's been selling us a lie the whole time and uh and he's perpetrating it as if he's like a superhero. Right. Well, and I think it's funny that even if he was out and they went with like Kamala, like they they uh show her doing all that shit like where she can't talk either now. Yeah. So what is that? Are they brainwashing these people or like you have to wonder, like, it how are they weird. dumbing them down? Because it doesn't seem like she was like that during, like, election no. time. She was very and vocal. A, yeah, and now all of a sudden they just put her in the background, and then all of a sudden she shows up talking this, like, uh, doing these rants that don't make sense, or you know what I'm saying? Just you know, like Biden. And, and before Biden was elected, even while he was with Obama as vice president, I, 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 I don't like to dive too deep into... Uh, where I lean politically because I literally don't, I've never voted, but I, I watch these people because they are, they dictate the future of my life and our children's futures and stuff. Right. And, uh, you know, this guy Biden, he's been a racist since the nineties. He's been a total douchebag his entire career politically. And then they bring him in and, you know, Kamala, was kind of the same way, but she was at least vocal when she was running for vice. Right, right. And now they kind of, they've hidden everybody and let the rest of the White House do all their bidding for them. Yes, I agree. It it disgusts me. That disgusts me. I want a president that has the balls to stand in front of us and say what you got to say or, you know, uh, uh, titty balls or testicles, whatever you got. <laughs> you know, I I don't care if it's yeah, a male like, or a female, but have matter. the have the fortitude within yourself to come out and express yourself the correct way in right. front of the American people and stop making other people speak for you. Well, I don't feel like we have a president right now. I feel like they put a puppet up and then they just took over and we're like, we're going to do what we want. And then we're going to say that you guys have an option. You know what I'm saying? I wonder how many, how many people heard you say, I never voted and just gasped because we are so like vote or die or you must have your vote, yeah. blah, blah. You know, like they're probably every time I've said I've never voted or anything like that. People just look at me like, are you stupid? Like and you're I'm, an alien. Yeah. And I'm like, do you think that shit actually works? You see what we got left with and like how where we're at right now. And you're telling me people there's people out there that the majority voted for this. Right. Like, so I was able to vote during uh, 2008. I turned 18. And my grandmother went and took me to get my first ID, my first, like, official identification card. And uh, <laughs> I, was a, I was a bad kid in my teens, so after I got my identification card, I went and uh, bamboozled some people into buying me a six-pack. And then I also went and I bought some Bud and stuff. And I was rolling up, and I thought about it, like, man, I'm able to vote now. And I was kind of encouraged because... I don't know. I I was everybody's raised throughout your entire uh, grade school career that uh, that's what you do. You vote. You do these things. That's a part of being an adult. But when it came time for me to vote, I I did pay attention to what was going on in the election, and I didn't trust them. Uh, I didn't trust which election nobody. Was it? I think 2008 was Obama's first uh, presidency run. Gotcha. And I don't think anybody was paying attention during that election because I think. Uh, a lot of what was said was we want to have our first African-American president. So yeah. that dude could have almost said anything and he was in the door. Like I've never seen anything like that either, where it was just, we are basically trying to put somebody 
in the White House just because of, you know, their skin color or because yeah. of who they were. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I think that's where we made our first mistake as Americans. It's like we just stopped watching. We were like, we're just going to go on, you know, things that don't make a difference and whether he's going to screw us over or do well, what he does. You know what I'm saying? During that time, I was actually I was a fan of Obama. I was, too. I, I still I, am. I, yeah, I don't like think Obama I like was a bad president. I'm but just saying like at the same time. I've always paid attention to a lot of these things, and I, I am sorry. We'll get back to this article in a moment, but um, during that time, I remember when Obama was running and Trump previously, uh, we had just gotten over 9-11 and George Bush and the Iraqi yes. war that and Afghanistan. <laughs> and, like, dude, I was losing friends to war, and I was seeing all this destruction right. going on to my peers. And um, while Obama was running... I was very convinced. I was like, wow, this dude's like, I've never seen nobody able to speak to the American people the way he did. Yes, that His was the other swag, thing. Uh, the, everything that he had, he had all the pieces in the puzzle. Right. But then Trump came out and started doing interviews, and he was like, this guy is not an American, and he's not legally allowed well, to run. I don't think Trump started all that. I think that was something that happened uh, with like conservatives bringing that up and then they kind of like probed it and they were like, it's not a big deal. And Trump was like, mm, you guys didn't find anything during this probe. I think I'm going to keep talking about this. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And like he started running with it when everybody else, he just gets credit for it. But I think that was like conservatives in the, like the white house. But the weird thing about all of that is that, you know, Despite how you feel about Trump, you know, I work in the steel industry and I, I I have seen changes that he did good for the economy. And prior to him, uh, prior to the Obama uh, administration run for the presidency uh, seat, he uh, Trump had already done interviews where he said, I would never run for president. I'm not even interested that's not like that's not my thing. I'm a businessman. Th those were videos from a very long time ago, though. Like it was like the, it was the time. mid '90s. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So like things a decade change. later, a little over a decade, 13 years later, give or take a few years, uh, Obama runs and he's like, "Yo, like this guy doesn't have a birth certificate from America, which makes him not eligible for uh, that job." Right. And I think that's what geared. Trump into running right and I think Trump has you know he gets to use that publicity that bad publicity from all them talking about all these shit all this shit that like conservatives don't stand for anyway you know what I'm saying so they're like oh these people don't like this they hate this guy we fucking love him you know and that just helps him I think they should shut their mouths and vote against him you know like now another person that's coming up in this 2024 uh, race is RFK he uh the the uh John F Kennedy's nephew I believe he is uh he's one of the Kennedys there's tons he, of he's, them right he's like the nephew of John F Kennedy and uh you know I've been seeing him do a press run lately and he he um I haven't heard anything about or seen anything that he's had to say or but I know that he's like he I heard that he's like left leaning but he has a lot of conservative values but I've never heard him once speak or anything, so I wouldn't know. Well, he he has problems with his vocal cords. He has like this weird. Oh, so I wouldn't be thing. able to hear him anyway. Well, he, <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Like, he he does sound all fucked up. But he, he, so he sounds like our next president. <laughs> <laughs> but he's actually able to uh, he's able to speak. It's not like Biden where he's fumbling over words and just saying random ass shit all the time. But I also think, dude, is like, isn't he jacked? Like. No, well, he's, he's like not. seventy and like built. No, <laughs> he's seventy five, and he uh, he he did this uh, video where he like bench pressed like a hundred pounds, and he did it like ten reps yeah. for a seventy five year old guy. I mean, he does look really good for seventy whatever the fuck he is. Actually, I think he's sixty nine. I I'm I'm shooting it way too over saying he's <laughs> seventy five. He's like sixty nine years old. Whoop whoop, sixty nine. Right, perfect age. <laughs> like, <laughs> my favorite age. <laughs> right. <laughs> he's a silver fox, and yes, this sir. dude, he's like a, he's trying to go to war with the pharmaceutical companies, and I actually, I really kind of applaud that. I like that. What is his fight against the? Uh, 
pharmaceutical companies, though. What is he saying? Well, uh, he's, he's going to do about it. He was on the health administration or something forever. That was a big portion of his career. The FDA? And no, 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 no. He uh, The CDC. It, he worked with the CDC and Fauci. Gotcha. He worked hand in hand with Fauci for years. Okay, gotcha. So uh, he, he's been saying that, uh, you know, all these things, it's like uh, – he brings to light that Bill Gates was putting out a vaccine that was actually giving people polio. That is actually recorded truths. Yep, all these and are truths. <laughs> it, it's a super truth. And he was against uh, the COVID vaccine. This is RFK was against it. Uh, Nobody here at No Outlet Live is uh, debating anything to do with the COVID, any of that. I'm past it. Don't give a shit how you feel about it. Well, not it. nobody. Here's how I'm going to tell you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, dude, I was so pumped. <laughs> Play <Playing> my flag. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he, he said he was against it because it wasn't uh, tested long enough, and I, I agree with that. I don't think it was tested long enough. Well, I, I think there's evidence to show that it is actually doing damage to people. Like, you know? Yeah, all of these sports stars that they're they're dropping like flies in record numbers. Yeah, and they're like, they're not attributing it to anything. Oh uh, right, and throughout your history, when have you ever seen that? Like people just falling out, uh, like during sports events. You know what I'm saying? It's happened. Never. Soccer players, especially. I feel like it's always soccer players. You see guys like on the on the gridiron. You you might get uh you might get tackled really hard and knocked out and concussed, or yeah. maybe get some CTE or something. But a concussion but, is a lot different than your heart just stopping on the field. You know what I'm saying? And just dropping like, yeah. dead randomly off of a very mediocre tackle. Right. That yeah. doesn't happen to a 25 year old man. So like it, you know, I don't know. He he works in that field, so I feel like I would trust him. He has a book out that talks, I would never trust anybody from the government, but <laughs> he has, he has a book out that says Fauci and Me. I think is what the book is called. Oh, I'm not reading. I, I haven't read it myself, but I do. Uh, he covers a lot of these things, and he says that he went out of his own way to find documentation to back up everything that he claims. Right. Well, according to the medical field, the CDC and vaccines and see if you have facts, I'm I'm all for that. But if you can't show any facts and you just keep like saying it, that's just basically running your mouth like that's rhetoric that, at that point. You know, it's like and that's what all these facts. guys keep doing. That's yeah. a, like, you know, I I half like Trump, but I half don't like him because he's such a shit talker. Uh, but I feel like with Trump, we wouldn't be in. Uh, Ukraine and fucking Russia wouldn't be at war. He would have stopped that. Like, dude did go to all these other countries and just made all these deals and actually had shit going pretty good. They were like, he's going to start World War Three, And then fucking Biden's over here about to start that shit anyway. Starting like, World War Three. Yeah, like, what the <laughs> fuck is going on? You know, like, I don't think Trump would have. I think they just put a lot of shit out about him because, like I said, they don't want him in there for any reason at all. He was firing people left and right, and I think that scared them because he was going to take people out of very valuable positions. Oh, uh, and he did. I mean, he did take a lot of people out of valuable positions. That yeah, they I mean, had he, and like, when he first got elected, I mean, not too far after, I think it might have been a year, he uh, he fired the director of the FBI. Oh, uh, right. Like, now all this stuff's coming out about the FBI protecting the Biden family from their, uh, their they're literally bribing the world. Yeah. And making deals and cutting deals and selling secrets. Well, and they're getting and they're getting kickbacks from China and everything else. And they have like proof of all that. But instead, we're going after not a president. Like, don't you think we should worry about the dude in the White House and what he's up to? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's kind of gets me a little bit. And like I said, I don't care for either of them. I don't really care. Like, I've always been uh, in the middle. The same with me. And that's why I never voted, because you can't really trust none of them. But some of them do. F Oh shit! Some of them do feel like uh, like they are a better fit for that job, right? And you know, do we want do we want the same people running our country that have been running our country since the beginning of time, or do we want a fresh face? And are they fighting that fresh face because they're not going to be able to keep running things this way? Like, because he was actually making legitimate like things like changes and stuff, firing people and stuff like that, you know? And that's what you're supposed to do. I feel like when you get a new owner of a company, you know, some people do lose their jobs, but who are you to judge uh, that call? Because maybe it was the right call for the company. And in this case, our 
entire country is the company. Uh, yeah. And I think during the whole COVID thing, the way they railroaded him and tried to make everything so ass backwards, I think that was just a way for them to kind of topple the economy on purpose and and keep us where, you know, broke and like worrying about where our next meal is going to come from as the prices just keep rising. Cause and not only that, like they came at uh they came out of all of uh, America's best friend, Joe Rogan. They came at his throat That's because he used ivermectin and it was, they kept calling it horse dewormer all over the media. Hey, what he was using was not horse dewormer. It was a human uh, product. It was a product yes. for humans for um specific illnesses the problem with that whole thing is our media leans so hard one way that they'll they'll champion things that could be wrong because one party is wrong about something and they'll keep saying this is right this is right but it's it may not be the right thing but they're not giving us a full scale of what's actually going on both sides of things so you're just hearing one side of everything and then saying somebody's evil, like they're brainwashing you. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it's scary. Yeah. It's really scary about how everything's kind of rolling out. But getting back to this article, um, they're trying to wash him out of the, the 2024 election with the 14th Amendment. Let me uh, click on this and actually look into what, what the 14th is, Amendment is. I was just going to ask you, what is the 14th Amendment? Because I don't even know my yeah, amendments that well. I'm, I'm not, not very American, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> you and me both, brother. But there's some dude that wants to scream in my face right now. You know what it is, you fucking non-American asshole. <laughs> like, uh, there's an advocacy br- uh, group. Uh, Mi Familia Vota. A non-profit organization. They're pushing for political equality and have joined forces with uh, to create Trump is disqualified campaign uh, the campaign aims to inform voters and state officials of Section three of the 14th Amendment. Uh, but it does not quote it. We're just like, you broke the 14th Amendment. We hate you. All right, hold like- <laughs> on. Let, me, let me look this up. Well, I didn't just say it in the article. See, they try to confuse you and make things not very clear. The fucking media. We were yeah, just that's saying. That's <laughs> what I'm saying. Too, leaning too far one way. We can't get no information. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. 14th Amendment simplified on Google. Uh, the 14th Amendment was created in 1868. The 14th Amendment to the United States Constitution was adopted on Ju- July 9th, 1868 as... One of the Reconstruction Amendments, usually considered as one of the most consequential amendments. <laughs> this is not saying anything. It addresses citizenship rights and equal protection under the law and was proposed in response to issues related to former slaves following the American Civil War. So what the fuck does that have to do with Trump? Uh, I couldn't tell you. That's why you should... Uh read the story a little more, re- get stories from somewhere else. Cause I don't understand what the take is on it. Like, all right, hold on. We'll go back to the story then. Let's see. Because actually they say that, uh, Biden's lineage goes back to, uh, his family were slave owners and stuff. And it's, uh, and they said that they did the DNA. I saw it on uh CNN or some shit and never came up that Trump did that, but Biden. And, uh, also it was shocking because they said Obama came up on that too, that his family were slave owners. No shit. Biden and Obama, which is kind of crazy, right? Well, I, you know, the lineage of a lot of whites of America in some way or form will tie back into that. But you also got to wonder how many mixed race people there are now yeah, that I have mean, that everything same, that share up. that same lineage. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like, and that, you know, that's how Obama could got, could have gotten caught up in like, yeah. you know, being that. But then people are sitting here saying, like mixed people are probably saying, like you were your family was a slave owner. But then so were yours. They it would shock them to know that probably if yeah. they did. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like we are eventually we are going to all just be one color people. Yeah. Like it's inevitable. You know what I'm saying? Like a odd. Like we're all gonna end up. Uh, what did Nostradamus say? Uh, we'll all be blue in the future. 
I hope so. That'll be cool. Because the air quality is going to diminish. And he might have been on to something, but, you know, that's a big conspiracy <laughs> or whatever. All, the air quality will diminish and we're going to turn blue. That sounds like uh, we're going to suffocate. <laughs> we'll just yeah. be blue because we've suffocated. <laughs> but we'll adapt because humans adapt. <laughs> right. The groups are pushing, uh, according to the Washington Examiner is where I got this article from, the groups are pushing efforts across the nation to bar Trump from appearing on the 2024 ballot next November, urging secretaries of the state and chief election officials through letters to use what is known as the insurre- uh, insurrectionist disqualifi- oh, disqualification clause of the 14th Amendment to block Trump from any future ballot, according to the free speech for people. I think this has to do with uh, the insurrection of oh january 6th january 6th yeah which that whole thing too is crazy like that was odd i mean he nobody can deny i i'm sorry for all of you trumpers you can't deny that trump did perpetuate that oh I yeah mean, he for pushed sure that to happen and then he acted like it wasn't his fault when it actually happened oh yeah well and did they did they uh did they fuck up any property or anything? I feel like they just walked in and did like a little demonstration, you know, like BLM ran down the street and burnt down neighborhoods around the world. Like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? You're getting mad because they went into a building and fucking had a little, well, held a little whatever. Uh, About, I can't remember what it was like five months ago, six months ago, uh, the videos got released and a lot of these people were escorted around the building, right. the people that went in, like the guy with the stupid fucking yeah, helmet I saw it. They were and all that stuff, they escorted by police escorts. So, uh, really, like, what what was the deal there? And that's why they got rid of uh, what's his face, uh, the fucking Tucker Carlson. They had to get rid of him on Fox because they said they kept on spreading uh, fakeness and stuff. But he was one of the, he was the first person to leak that story. I bet you they were mad they got rid of him though, because I I don't even know what Fox News is anymore. Like. I don't think I, I, you hear Fox News anymore. Just like CNN, both of the yeah. both of, both of the main players who are spreading the most rhetoric and most bullshit are both off the air now. Basically, like yeah, isn't that all crazy? Forgotten. Don yeah. Lemon and uh, and Tucker Carlson both got canned, and that was like their 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 uh, the faces. Yeah, that was the faces that was, of that the was company. The bread and butter for those yeah. for those businesses. Like, like how you gonna get rid of the meat and potatoes and just keep salad? Yeah, right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> right? Is Chris Cuomo still on there? Or whatever. That's <laughs> the salad. Cuomo. Like, <laughs> <laughs> salad tosser. Dude hiding in his basement, pretending to have COVID. Do you remember that? And he, was yeah, like, he was out buying a car. Or some shit. They said ride his bike. I forget what it was. <laughs> <laughs> that dude was a wild man, and they started flexing on people, and they brought it up like, "Why is you not in the house when you got COVID?" He was like. Bitch, I'm allowed out. Yeah. I'm in America. I'm, yeah. <laughs> like pulled that shit after he was just on CNN. Like, you guys better be real Americans and stay home. <laughs> Keep your ass in the house. I'm doing it, and so is my family. But you it, saw all of this, and people were like, Yeah, we definitely agree with this, or we definitely agree with that. And you could both tell they were straight both bullshit. Like, yeah, you, like, you know, like it was kind of a gray area in both of those things Yeah, that, you know, I feel like they put so much pressure on, on Trump to try to run him out that I don't think he had a chance to do anything about COVID. And I don't think Biden had the proper answer to COVID. No, like I think just down the line, they did that shit on purpose just to try to destroy the economy. Well, when you, when you get everybody in a frenzy, it's hard to keep your feet under you. Yes. You know what I mean? Like yes. when you uh when you get bombarded from every side and it's a very serious uh thing, like the COVID thing was scary at the very beginning. It right. was terrifying, dude. I, I was worried for me and my family. Um, you know, when you looked into it though, even at the beginning of it, uh they're saying that it's, you know, older people with um or people with pre existing conditions, yeah. things like that. So yeah, I agree. Watch those people, like get those yeah. people going. Like, but if we got shelter it, it them, yeah, let me go to work. Yes. Don't, don't destroy the economy because don't you want to save old people. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't make it to where when I go to the grocery store, I have to get into a fist fight over a gallon of milk. Ah, uh, yes. You know what I mean? Yes. And I Be- think that's what it kind of became just like it a, was a panicked frenzy. And, 
you know, I couldn't wipe my ass for a couple of weeks because I couldn't get no toilet paper. You know, we, we out here using <laughs> leaves and grass. I wasn't using nothing. I was just letting that shit just, hit the I'm shower, scared. baby. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you can afford water. <laughs> and you you know what? Let, let me get back to the, 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 the COVID thing. Uh, when they gave us our checks, uh, everybody got cashed out. Every working American. And then probably and then some, uh, you know. I got charged for all that back. I have owed on taxes the first time in my life the past three years, and I'm a single white male. That's how I file every time. So I already don't get much back either way. All right, you're getting like a few hundred bucks. But uh, what are you claiming on your taxes? You do the one or you do the two? I believe I do one. <laughs> all right, you should do zero. So they take all the taxes out, and then you get more money back at the end of the year anyway, and that way you make sure you cover your taxes. But they charged me for three years for the COVID money they gave me. And I then they charged that. me. What they charge you for? They found you not to be an American. They were like, this dude don't have a birth certificate. No, that's, <laughs> that was the thing. I, they, uh, they, they taxed us back for that money. They gave us during that time. Uh, that was like, I a don't part know if of they it. did or not. Like I never got anything like that. Rita always hits me up like, but other than Rita tax, I don't think I've ever paid a different tax than just paying my taxes every year. I swear that's why they kept taking my money. Even last year, they took my entire uh, check. And that's weird because I, I don't know anything about it. I'm just speaking out my ass right now. Yeah. But I feel like um, the the stimulus wasn't their money either. They just printed that shit up, more money, raised inflation, gave us money that wasn't real. And that's why we're in the situation we're in now where, like, yeah. we can't, like, inflation is so... Printing you know, money that isn't backed by anything. Yeah, and they're still and they're still printing money to this day. Yeah. And then they have all these countries pulling out, like uh, pulling their bonds on us and shit. And we're not, we're going to pay that back with money that's printed. That's not worth anything. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it just becomes paper. Yeah. Which is going to take our paper. inflation more up. It oh, is yeah. nice paper. I know. I couldn't make it. I tried <laughs> many times. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Allowing a known insurrectionist to appear on the ballot. Uh, going back to this uh, uh, article about Trump being barred from the 2024 election. Uh, allowing a known insurrectionist to appear on the ballot is inconsistent with your obligation and oath of office to support the U.S. Constitution. The letter reads, it emphasized that states don't need permission from progress to enforce the Constitution. So they're saying that with using the 14th Amendment, the states themselves can just decide to not accept his ballots. Yeah, so like it doesn't even have to be like it just has to be state by state. So some states will automatically lose because they won't even count his ballots. I mean, how many states though do you think are gonna be back in Trump? I feel like a big chunk of them will. Uh, Everybody's uh, so tired of Biden, even I, a lot I of liberals. And I think that's why they're trying to shut him out right now is because or not liberals, Biden, Democrats. Let me correct myself, Democrats. A lot of Democrats yes. are tired of Biden. Yes. Liberals are a whole nother level of left. If Biden wins, I feel like that will show how rigged our government actually is. Because yeah. there's no way we can do no this way. again. There's no way. Like, uh, that's insane. Dude, he literally sat down with a bunch of world leaders and said, I sold state uh, secrets. Yeah. Well, there's all kinds of shit on Biden. I mean, they can everything he uh, said in the past four years has yeah. been insane. Uh, yeah, it makes no sense. Dude can't stay on his feet to save his fucking life. Bro. I don't <laughs> I know. know what that's about. I, I like, know. I know I had a problem like when I first <laughs> had the stroke of standing up and falling on my face, but it was because I had a stroke. You know what I'm saying? Like, dude, you walk way better than he has in the past. That's what I'm 10 trying years. to say. And <laughs> dude, it was a long run. Like, I used to just stand up. Just be standing there bloop, on my face for no reason. People be looking at me stupid like, what's going on? I used to be Biden. Like this guy. <laughs> I should have ran for fucking president, bro. I couldn't talk straight. I was fucking half silly. Like, <laughs> Bro, we, we should have dyed your hair and your beard white and that then ran you for office, dude. Got me a fake ID. Well, I think I'm old enough to be president now. No. How old are you? 35, I think. Uh, 45. Oh, 45? Some almost It's there. above 40s. I, I do believe. And, you know, I wanted to bring that up earlier when, it, uh, when we started talking about how, how uh, you know, I didn't vote and I don't trust none of these uh, people that are running for office. Uh, they have to change this age range. 
I think this country needs a young man, somebody with vigor, somebody that has, uh, somebody that understands what the new generation is going through and sees right. where they could play their hand. Well, and I don't think that that starts in in the White House. I think they need to start putting term limits on, like the Senate, and you know all yeah, that, like yeah. all these old fucking people, like just the Supreme ruining Court shit because is a disaster. They don't have to worry about anything, any of the repercussions for it's their a actions lifetime because job. they're they're not going to be around long enough to see the repercussions yeah. of their actions. You and know it's what I'm a saying? lifetime job; they never have to leave. Yeah, they just get in all of this uh, money through campaigns that they don't even actually need to run. Right. And that's a problem. Like, yeah, it's just, you Getting know, paid lobbyists. Off by big pharma and yep. lobbyists. It, and that's all it is, is who's giving them a payoff. That's the only thing I think that I see, like, well, that's what I see good in Trump is that he ran his whole election on his own money. He didn't go to the lobbyist. He didn't make any backdoor deals. He just went straight out and just, you know, did that and claimed bankruptcy, wrote it off on his taxes, and he was there. He said, I don't need your money. <laughs> I already have money. Yeah, <laughs> no, Trump has borrowed money. I feel like all the time, and then I feel like he just he just uh, fucking uh, claims bankruptcy against his money, and then just starts over again. I mean, all rich people do that. Uh, yeah, but that that is the tax loophole. But he then yeah. he, he did it without you know uh, going to anybody else. He was like, I'll just go into massive debt, and yeah. he fucking boom, like back on top, baby. I mean, a lot of people seem to forget when that was the big topic. Of uh, Trump and his taxes and all of this stuff about him uh, filing bankruptcy, people forget one of our nation's favorite people, Fifty Cent. <laughs> <laughs> right, one of our nation's favorite. Yes, dude. Household I, name. He's adored by yes. all of us. <laughs> hey, Fifty, if you <laughs> ever happen to see this, I love you with all of my heart. Just come and stop by the show, you know. Bro, come on through. <laughs> no, all that live. We'll love to interview you. <laughs> but 50 Cent filed bankruptcy the same way because he had loaned out so much money in all these directions and he wasn't recouping it fast enough. Right. So he filed bankruptcy. And I believe that there's interviews that you would be able to find on YouTube where he explains when you file bankruptcy, it's not exactly about him being so far in debt that he can't recoup. It's about putting yourself on an even playing field to get that money back and then be back on your feet. Yes. I, Their bankruptcy is different than me and you. Well, uh, just because we're, we're claiming bankruptcy on $5. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, if you have if you have millions of dollars that you're throwing around and you you file bankruptcy on that, they're like, oh, we want to make sure this dude gets his money back, keeps pumping yeah. it into this back into the system. If your like, credit's three thousand, I don't think you have to worry about fucking uh, uh, right. returning to zero. Exactly. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you, know you got. Saying? We know you got the black card. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. You can sell a couple of cars and get back on your feet. Oh yeah. But he don't have to do that. You can just uh, do it the legal way and uh, the taxing way, and uh, it's. It's a loophole, but it works for people with generational money. Uh, yes. It doesn't work for us, though, like on our level, which sucks. But that's how the government has grown stronger than outgrown the people to where inflation is so high. Everything's so high is because we let them do this and they never let us have those tax breaks. They never give the like uh, low like the middle class. I was going to say the lower class, but I don't want people to take me wrong. I am low class, but yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like the middle class, they've always starved the middle class out yeah. while, you know, everybody else got like tax breaks and things like that to keep growing their money. And then they slave these middle class to death. Well, and one don't thing, give them shit. one thing that I've been, uh, they barely get a pension. I watch stuff about this discussion all the time. And one thing that I've been, uh, consistently hearing lately is that, uh, there's a lot of rich people there explaining what they see in the future forecast of America and they're saying that they're trying to drown out the middle class so that there's only a low and a high class. Yes, which has always probably been. I mean, the middle class has always been the lower class anyway. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, there isn't been, really a middle. They've been here with me in the gutter. You're like, either you're either high class or you're not. It's just bad that they convinced all these people to slave away for them for that long. You know, like blue collar was like something you were proud of. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And like. They made that a pride thing, and I think that was the brainwashing and dumbing down of society, too. It was. I mean, even, like, when you go back to, like, uh, World War II, uh, World War II, when that popped off, 
um, you know, the, the nation backed it up and everybody had faith in what was going on and that we were doing the right thing. And now that we, uh, the past few wars that we've been in, I've seen that everything was kind of like a uh, lopsided to where like, you know, you always have somebody that's willing to serve because this is a great country. It is an amazing country. Freedom is here, whether you like to believe it or not. This is a very safe, uh, one of the biggest safe havens of the world. And that's why it's the melting pot of the world. But when we have these giant wars, you know what I mean? How many people do you see out here that's uh, backing the war with Ukraine and Russia, but is going out to fight? Uh, right. Nobody is. No. They just got a whole lot to fucking say about it, but nobody's going to war. Well, what are what are they fighting over? I don't even know. That's how far I've looked into it. Like, I just know what they're fighting. Like, oh, they're getting bombed and stuff. Nobody like, really knows because it seems like all we get is the propaganda. Right. And I watch a lot of stuff about Putin, and, you know, I... I never want to come off on this show or to the public to say like, oh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a big Russia uh, backer or anything like that. But uh, I watch these speeches that this guy gives and he seems like he's in the right. But also, I feel like is what I'm seeing. Do you propaganda, feel like you just said you love Trump? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people agree. I mean, Vladimir Putin can be a bad guy. It's known that if you go over there and you step on his toes in the slightest way, you're going to be disappeared. Well, he's a dictator, right? He's a dictator. And you got to understand well, a that's communist. not... Uh, well, the same difference, I feel like. A I, dictator is different. That's more uh, 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 North Korea. Yeah, but communist is like one, one ruler overall, right? Basically, where there's not an election. He didn't get elected there. He was just put... Like, well, they, they he run elections, in line. but he... he uh, but he, yeah, right. <laughs> he bullies his way into winning them. Ah, uh, yeah, like Biden did. Not <laughs> I'm joking. He had to though. He had to do something. So going back to uh, Washington Examiner, this will be the last little bit of this. Uh, yeah, other organizations get shit. <laughs> have examined the use of the Fourteenth Amendment concerning those involved in the January sixth Capitol riot. The Project on Government Oversight issued a report in November of 2022 that concluded uh, the House January 6th committee has evidence needed to trigger Section Section 3 of the 14th Amendment, which could bar Trump from running for president. We'll see how that goes out. Um, I, I'm not going to put too much into that. Uh, I don't believe it. He's going to run one way or another. You got so much of the com uh, the country that backs this guy that you can't just keep him from running. I it, don't think that would happen. It would be a disaster. You would have half of the country just uproaring. Yeah, I think I think Trump is gonna get to run again. And yeah, a lot of the stuff that he's saying, I don't know if he can make it happen or not. He won't. We're gonna see. Well, that's. I mean, you can't say that either because the whole rest of the government's he, against them. Yeah, but when he ran the first time. He said a lot of shit, and then he actually put action behind that. And Some like, of it, uh, but I'm saying more more than most people. Most people run on run on a bunch of shit and then do nothing when they get in the White House, like they were bought off. You know I mean, what I'm it saying? was the same like, thing with Bill Clinton, though. I mean, Bill Clinton. I was very young when he got elected. Hey, careful talking about Bill Clinton. He might disappear you for real. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. When he showed up. He fulfilled a lot of promises, and people loved him for it. Yes. He was also a fucking total shitbag. Uh, yeah, I mean, well, was he? Because I feel like I feel like uh, Hillary was... His dumpster wife? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I feel like she was the one... <laughs> I feel like she was the one pulling all the strings, all, doing all the bad shit. And, and he fucking, was just getting BJ's. <laughs> Bill, Bill was just getting BJ's and playing his saxophone. What's wrong with that? He's like, I'll practice in jazz notes. <laughs> uh, right. You know, he had to he had to get good at that playing that saxophone somehow. You know, he had a lot of time to practice because his wife was out doing all the dirt. Okay, so this is a really She was fun... eating the kids' faces and stuff. Not Bill. <laughs> this is a super fun article that I found earlier. Uh it's from comicsans.com. Michael Jordan offers blunt one word reaction to his son dating Scottie Pippen's ex wife. Damn, his son's dating Scottie Pippen's ex wife? This is Scottie Pippen's ex wife. 
But which one? Doesn't doesn't Scotty Pippen have like a bunch? He was even married to Carmen Electra, wasn't he? Well, he's got a new wife, and he just tattooed his new wife's uh, face on his face. No way, dude. dude. Hold on, you gotta see this. Or uh, I'm not talking. You said Scotty Pippen. I wasn't talking about Scotty Pippen. Who was oh. Carmen Electra? Uh, who's the worm? The worm. Yeah, on the Bulls, there's uh, Jordan Pippen and. He went to North Korea. Only other dude besides Trump to probably go to North Korea and go meet up with, you know. Oh, God. Why am I blanking? His Why name? am I? Because I love that dude. That dude's funny as fuck. Hold on. Hold on. I think they call him Big Worm or The Worm no, or something. It's going to come to me because I, I interviewed his uh, his friend on this show. Yeah, he used to uh, wear Andrew wedding dresses. Amager. Uh, uh, he would wear the wedding dress, the green now, hair, now the nose it, ring. Like. Uh, it's on the tip of my tongue too. Sorry, we didn't do our research for real. Like we're just gonna do it now. <laughs> no, Everybody, it, hold on. We're we're like blanking out the uh, Rodman. Very, Rodman. Dennis Rodman. <laughs> Dennis Rodman. Dennis I didn't have to Rodman. look it up. It just popped in my head because that dude's so fucking cool. Okay. <laughs> now, actually, so I I'm happy that you brought that up because I have it wrong. Scotty Pippen did not tattoo his wife's uh, face. Uh, it on was his Rodman. Face. That did it. I it knew was that Dennis was, Rodman. I knew that was a Rodman thing, like for sure. Like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, you got to see this shit. It's so funny. Dennis Rodman. <laughs> dude, this is fucking great. And it's funny that you bring up anything about the Bulls and you say Pippen and I'm like, ah, uh, who? Kind of. I know who he is. But yeah, there you go. There's your boy. Yeah, this is this is our guy. Shout out to Andrew Eminger. Yeah. Gotta get you back on the show. Hold on. I, lo- I love him, dude. He's like, he's an entertainer for sure. And he like. He was all about trans rights, I'm sure. He's in wearing a dress and everything else, but it wasn't even cool. Come on. Did they scrub this? I know I saw this earlier. I swear. Oh, here we go. No, if you, hold on. I thought you meant like where her nose was. It was like tattooed on him like that, like a mask. Like I didn't know it was just on the side of his face. But look, it's like the whole side of his face. But dude. even as an old man, look how fucking cool he looks. Like for he's, <laughs> he's gonna be so fucking. He's gonna rule until the day he dies. Hell yeah, he'll be nine years old, swinging dick, fucking just. Doing what he wants. Doing and what he wants, bro. Going I don't necessarily. North Korea. Yeah, I don't necessarily agree with the face tattoo, but I mean, he's living his best life. He always has. <laughs> I I wouldn't be able to get a woman her name tattooed on me. Yeah. Let alone her face on my face. Not even like her handprint, like you do with babies and stuff. How you put their <laughs> like, yeah. fucking hand or foot? You ain't getting one of those either, dude. Like, <laughs> and this dude, like, he's a wild boy, man. Yeah, he always has been, man. He's he's a wild card. That's why I like him. Like you never okay. know. So this is Scotty Pippen's ex wife right here. Okay. And this is Jordan's son. Which? Why does Jordan's son look like uh not his son? <laughs> well, not even his <laughs> Tyler not his Perry. Son, Tyler Perry. Yes, I thought that was Tyler Perry. Like when you pulled it up, like they kind of look similar. Maybe that's that's not Jordan's son. <laughs> I really hope this isn't like a bunk. Uh, article but we will cover it anyway <laughs> michael jordan doesn't approve of his son dating larsa pippen okay this is from nba central on twitter hey mr jordan what do you think about marcus and larsa pippen together you approve of it no you don't approve do you think he's going to ask her to marry him jordan. probably because he's a dumb Yeah, Jordan don't don't fuck with nobody. He doesn't give a fuck. He just laughed and was like, nope. <laughs> and then he moved on his way. Right. He doesn't give a shit. He's so unimpressed all the time. Oh, yeah. I like how, like, every story about Jordan not liking something is always, like, the meme of him crying. Like- <laughs> <laughs> I know, dude. <laughs> <laughs> He'll never live that one down, neither. I don't think he needs to. I think when you when you have a meme like that, you know, you're probably making a kickback off of it somewhere. <laughs> Here like, you ever see those kids on YouTube famous or whatever meme famous like LeBron James says on Twitter he's finally showed his distaste in that relationship publicly it took him a minute well we listen to your distaste <laughs> about the people dating your mom LeBron yeah I just, think, <laughs> I just think dude's jealous he's like yeah right like anything Jordan does I'm just gonna hate on that dude 
uh, Colin Ghost Panda says, the way Mike said no was this cat. <laughs> <laughs> See, and that could be that could be Michael Jordan crying. They look almost the same. I think that is the same meme. <laughs> oh shit! Yeah, I was really into that. But uh, we'll go to a quick break, and we will be right back. Thank God, I need uh, some fucking water. <laughs> yeah, we'll be right back, and we'll play some videos and show you guys some stuff, and we'll chop it up for the rest of the show. We'll be back. Stay tuned in, bitches. Uh, hold on, br- 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 break. <laughs> Oh shit. Hold on. We're <laughs> Yeah, we are. We are. We are. We are. The show will be right back. No, seriously. Not like the time your dad left for cigarettes. I'm that kid whose father went out for a pack of cigarettes and he never came back. Aww. No outlet live. What's up? Jay Remy here, host of No Outlet Live. Are you considering or curious about how you can start your own podcast? Join Anchor. Anchor has everything you need to make a podcast for free. Monetize your podcast, one-click distribution, record from anywhere on the app, and they have unlimited free hosting. Download Anchor on the App Store or Google Play. Anchor, podcasting made easy. Guardian Roadside Solutions is ready to help with your roadside emergencies serving the greater Cleveland area. They have the knowledge and experience to get you back on the move quickly with staff available 24-7 to help with flat tires, tire damage, changes, fuel delivery, vehicle lockouts, dead battery, or new battery installs. If you find yourself or someone you know in this situation, call a Guardian at 440-833-6000. Like we're dying, driving like we stole the damn thing. We're all 
field range and damage, but god damn it, I love it. God damn it, I love it, and we deserve to be love a hell of a lot more than we've been here. In most days, I can't even look at myself in the mirror. Yeah, I feel so small in this city. Yeah, I feel so ugly in this world. Please accept us how we are. Just accept us how we are. of No Outlet Live. If you're into podcasts that explore any and everything, check us out. We stream anywhere you listen or watch podcasts or just type No Outlet Live one word in your Google search bar to find the show. Live Saturdays at 7 p.m. Eastern Time on Facebook. No Outlet Live, your road to boredom ends here. Do you like Tessa? Do you think this will be a date that can last? Well, uh, she's not very articulate. Are you looking for a place to have custom t-shirts made for your business? Well, we have the place for you. Flathouse Press works with 100% eco-friendly material for all of you conscious folks. They can also put out orders in a fraction of the time large-scale competitors can. They are a fun, locally grown Cleveland original company. Go to flathousepress.com and check out the variety of party toys, headbands, and clothing in their catalog. To no outlet live. Welcome back. It's No Outlet Live. You can call the line at 216-647-0064 or email the show. 
uh, regarding your political <laughs> ideas or whatever. Yeah, you know. <laughs> and, uh, no statements on this show are actually <laughs> anything real or based in actual fact, just opinions. <laughs> <laughs> that is the God's honest truth. Yes. And like I said it, uh, before we got into all that, I'm not a voter, so I don't give a fuck either way. But, uh, you know, uh, I I give it up to all of you people that have faith in uh, your system or your beliefs or whatnot. You are allowed to have that, and that what is, that's what American freedom is. So I respect it and uh, respect my choice. Yes. Um, now that we've uh, spoken so much about <laughs> uh, political stuff and Biden and all of the the past presidents of my entire lifetime. Uh, yeah, we cover we we covered a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we did. I want to go into some video and kind of uh you know um uh cleanse our palate, uh, if you will. Cool, Cl- palate cleanser is always good. So let's go into some palate cleansers and uh let me ask you this actually before we even start. Uh, <laughs> so a lot of these videos that I pull, I uh. It's stuff that I find on social media, and I save it. It either makes me laugh till I cry, or there's like a point to it. And I gotta ask you, man, <laughs> if if you're with a if you're with a lady and you okay. guys are having fun, she's like, "Oh, let's make the like this viral video where we do this thing." Uh, oh, I thought you meant a different type. Well, of video. actually, God. you know what? <laughs> let me let me let me show you the video before we even discuss it because okay. I don't want to blow the video. <laughs> I think you're explaining it wrong too, because I feel like you're telling me like <laughs> you and a chick are doing videos. <laughs> Dude, so if your girl's like. Let's make a viral video real quick. And like she's like she's like what what all the kids do is like I do a handstand and then we do this dance where you pick me up and we're like 60 90 there and she lets one go in uh, your face right from the fucking muff, dude. Is it your girlfriend or is it your wife though? That's his wife, I believe. I feel like your wife could pull that and get away with it like haha, that's funny. If I don't really know a chick, we've been dating for a couple months. She did that. I'm throwing that bitch on the floor. Like, <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you see, hold on. I wish we could see his face. Like, well, did he just straight choke? Like, <laughs> right here is where she releases this uh, this beef cannon, right? <laughs> this beef cannon. <laughs> And is, you, is that what you call it? <laughs> so watch, watch this dude's head. Damn, it broke it's his like, neck. <laughs> dude, it's like he caught a Mike Tyson punch right to oh, the yeah. eyeball. <laughs> dude, that is so crazy. And when I caught this video, I started to read through the comments. And so many people were like, Instant pink eye. <laughs> oh yeah, I didn't even think about that. That was a good take on it. Like, let's watch it uh, one more quick time. I Not mean, just pink eye, pink eyes. Uh, yeah, dude. <laughs> pink nostrils, pink teeth, uh, pink right. everything, dude. <laughs> if it's if it can be pink, it will be. <laughs> and this dude's a pink neck now. <laughs> <laughs> And that's that not just a like power. a little one. Yeah, that had some like she probably he probably felt like the wind off of dude, that one. Like, <laughs> dude, that would have generated a lot of force. Like, I wish she had a lighter on that bad boy. Like, <laughs> that bitch would have went up in flames. <laughs> okay. I used to know a dude who did that. Would like, uh, <laughs> would, he would uh. He would sit on the couch and he'd like uh, take his pants off and he'd put his ass in the air and take the lighter and just like and, just and shoot fucking, a flame. It really does work because I've seen I saw him do it many times. That was like his party trick. <laughs> he'd be showing everybody. I mean, we weren't just like sitting in the bedroom together or something. And he was fucking lighting his farts on fire. Like, Don't lie to me. I'm not that kinky. Like, <laughs> I do a lot of kinky shit, but I think that may be something over the line. You know, I've seen it on like uh, TV shows or movies and stuff, and I just never really believed it. I didn't think that there is enough uh methane in in uh in uh 
of flatulence. Oh, no, there definitely is. That's why they're killing all them cows in Ireland. <laughs> because they're, because they're like know catching the sky on fire when a jet flies by. Because uh, they're releasing too much methane, and they're, uh, they're saying uh, it's causing global warming from all these cows farting and stuff. That, that's a bullshit. Well, I know it's bullshit, but Greta Thunberg, Thunberg seems to think <laughs> that we need to kill all the fucking Not cows Greta. in Ireland. <laughs> Not Greta. How no, dare you? Y- you know, one thing that I, I had researched was uh, uh, with global warming and stuff, I, I went on a big binge of trying to figure that stuff out with internet research. I didn't, like, I'm not a scientist, but... Uh, there was a documentary that I watched that showed uh, these termite mounds in Africa. There's a, I can't remember which area or what country in Africa it was, but they have a very dense population of these crazy uh, termites that build like seven foot, eight foot mounds. And they glow at night because like these termites are a different breed of termite. Okay. So they like glow like lightning bugs. But they say that these mounds, they got like these uh, exhaust pipes up the center of them that they build, and they actually and produce a- more uh, methane into the atmosphere than all of the cows of the world combined. Right, and I'm sure there's a lot of things creating more, you know, than cows or whatever. Like it all is, but is it what kind of effect is it actually having? There, there's no way to, to even fix it, even if it, there is an effect. Of well, there's no it. way to even tell it's going on. I feel like how do there you fix it. a problem that you you don't have even a source of reference to? You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want to go too political again, but I was watching. Oh, here uh, we go. I was watching a, a some guy from our uh, the the energy uh, people of the United States. The, the leader, I, I forgot what his fucking position is, the commissioner of energy or whatever. Uh, he was getting interviewed by this guy from uh, from the Supreme Court, and he was asking him, the dude was like, I, we need a $50 trillion budget to reduce emissions by the year 2050. And this guy was like, he was like, well, if we give you $50 trillion by the year 2050, how much will it reduce? The global temperature and the guy would not answer. He did everything but answer the question. And oh, the dude reiterated can't. the question like ten times. They can't. Like and it's funny, I don't want to be go back into politics either, but uh I saw Trump talking about it the other day and he's like all snooty about it. He's like, Yeah, they say we need all this money to do this and uh we're gonna make the ocean uh rise by uh like a couple inches or something the next forty years. Like you think we need that <laughs> shit like all cocky? I'm like, God damn dude, like <laughs> so back to videos so let's <laughs> jump off this political train real quick i did have another one that relates to the the one we just watched let me see if i could find this i think it might be here if this one relates to politics in some way like dude <laughs> is that a is, it sounds like he's crinkling a water bottle or something that ain't, that ain't real <laughs> Hold on. Let's listen again. No, I, I I have to figure out how to get this bottom bar off of the screen so that you can see this this cat right here. Yeah. And this guy, they look at this dude fucking rip one, and it sounds like somebody's deep frying bacon or something. <laughs> listen real closely. <laughs> Uh, technical difficulties with the sound real quick but uh yeah they did get to hear that fucking uh that deep fryer fart <laughs> I, I don't know if that was real though like i'm saying that sounds like someone just crinkling a water bottle like it i'm like, pretty sure how many times it went like how much air do you possibly have in you to keep doing that like <laughs> i remember seeing this video when it first got released right and it was that sound i think this is real uh okay. and also like watch this guy's feet and then the second the the deep fryer cuts on and gets the temperature. Uh, you see the cat and this dude's dad. <laughs> they look. The yeah, I know that. Time. That's awesome that even the cat heard it. So obviously it must be real, you know. And they both look concerned. <laughs> so you know, like it, it kind of you got to look for these things in these fart videos. That I right. I my TikTok uh 
uh, algorithm, about 15% of it is these fart videos it, because I'm childish and farts are, will never not be funny. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Farts are uh, okay, I guess. They're the best. If it's like 2005 Dude. and you're on Jackass or something. <laughs> Have you ever ripped a deep fryer fart? Uh, I don't even know if I fart for real. Whoa. I'm just kidding. <laughs> 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 Dude, just the, the dad and the cat, they give them the same look at the same time. You couldn't script that better. I just think it's funny what we were talking about before break, and then we come right back to farts. Like, yeah, dude. It, all right. We're like super serious. Right. That's no all that live. You know, you can't ever take us too serious. Never. <laughs> we're always going to speak on something, whether you want to hear it or not. So that was our uh, fart video uh, segment. Uh, I mean... Let me play a little more here that we got going on. Another fart video? No. Okay. Yeah. Let me start this over. So let me ask you this before we even uh, jump into this. You remember back in school? Yes. Like you're in high school, uh, uh, junior high or whatnot. There was always the hot chick. Okay. And you always had somebody that would be making like gestures or something behind their back. Yeah. This kid is by the hottest chick in his school and he can't contain himself. Uh, She's asking the teacher questions and this dude is ejaculating on himself, I think. No way. I mean, that is nice ass. I can't see the rest Look of it. Look at his face. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's praying to God. <laughs> he did too. He like looked up like help me he was like please jesus can, <laughs> can i just touch it one time <laughs> <laughs> well it, like at first he looks like he's about to cry because he see it, it's now, an onion booty i was just gonna ask is it is it like uh does it smell funny or is it like just he's looking at it and just can't contain himself no, it's like, an onion booty it's gonna make you cry it's making that dude cry for sure yeah dude like, and pray to god and he did the the uh, the Salamanca from uh, Breaking Bad. You remember uh, uh, Salamanca uh, Tuco's uh, uncle? Remember how he did ding, his lips? Ding. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I'm glad that they that camera technology was not as advanced as it is now when I was in school. Cause, Dude, man, I'd be getting caught up doing some stupid shit too. <laughs> I would have been this kid. <laughs> Right there, doing his Salamanca yeah. lips. <laughs> yeah, like, what is that? Like, Praying to God. That ain't none of our business. I don't know why we needed to see it. That man could look at a booty if he wants to. Uh, but it's his friend that caught him. Okay. And, like, you can hear him in the background. Listen to the background. His friend is recording him and just ho ho hysterically laughing. <laughs> I guess that but he's it holding funnier. it back, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, because like he doesn't to be want quiet because he doesn't want to bring attention to yeah, it. You know, that's like... his boy. That's his white boy. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Said bro was ready to risk it all. <laughs> oh yeah. I've been there. And shit, I can't really see her, so I wouldn't know if he should or not, if that's a bad move. Yeah, you him, can't but... get like too good of a look of her, but Judging off of his uh, facial expression, I assume. Yeah, it's got to <laughs> be something to that. Hey, wake up, dude. <laughs> wake your ass up, dude. <laughs> dude, this happened to me. So we were at, now I wasn't asleep, but like uh, I had to go get a uh, new phone or whatever. And. Uh, my wife was like, uh, <laughs> I know, I know this dude that, uh, the, the woman she works with, it was one of her sons or whatever worked at the store. So we were going to go to him. So he get his commission or whatever is what yeah. she said. And we walk in and it's a dude. Do you know, um, I can't think of his name now either. See, I'm trying to pull references, but it's the new jackass dude, the fat guy that like jumps in the. Oh, cactuses. I know what you're talking about. He's got the fucked up ass teeth. Oh, yeah, my he camera's looks, all fucked up. He I mean, looked just like him, 
and dude is just sitting there snoring away. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, oh. hey, hey, buddy. And I'm like smacking on the desk and stuff, and dude won't wake up. And he finally woke up, looked at me just like that, and like so, <laughs> like out of his mind. I was like, I was like, dude, you had a job until you woke up. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's what happened to this guy. <laughs> you watch how mad he gets. Yeah, because when you wake somebody up like that, no lie, like it's I, so aggravating, isn't it? Uh, well, if you try to wake me up anytime, I'm coming up swinging. You better be, you know, sticking and moving. Yeah, dude. I don't know why. It's just when you wake up out of that, like. That's that like sleep paralysis almost. Yeah. And you're like halfway there, but you're, you're still not totally dreaming up. almost. Yeah. And you're just like, whatever. Like I swung on some dude's mom when I was a kid. But like, if you listen to this closely, you could hear that. Uh, I'm assuming that this is like a, a big metropolitan area, like New York City or something like that, where uh, you got these beautiful buildings. I mean, who knows? I, I don't po- I don't know where this took place. I'm just assuming. Let's say it's somewhere like New York City, a big right. area. Right. And uh, you got these fancy buildings downtown. Uh, this guy, man, he's uh, the dude that's recording this. I think he's outside of a window and he slaps his hand on it. He's oh, like, so yo, he's wake not up, even dude. He's standing there. He's not there. Uh, that's why I didn't hear him when he was like, hey, wake up. But, but his I- iPhone is so damn good. <laughs> he I know, right? the full reaction. That's a bad hey, wake up, dude. Up. You hear that where he knocked Wake your ass up, dude. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's how I look every time I wake up, no matter what wakes me up. Right. My alarm clock, uh, a friend, a girlfriend, anything. Anybody wakes me up, the dog, the cat, the birds chirping out the window. Yeah. I wake up with this fucking this face right here. <laughs> yeah, that's always the face. I've made that face, actually. Uh I used to work third shift at this like uh, fucking food packaging place, and I was in the lunchroom and I fell asleep and I o- <laughs> I overslept and like, dude came dude came walking in and starts slamming slamming the desk, starts yelling at me, and I I looked just like that and I was like, fuck you, and I just left and I never went back to that place again. <laughs> Sorry, that's my bad arm. You know what I'm saying? That's my strong hand. Yeah, that's that's my potato stir. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but this dude's face, man. That, that's this is. <laughs> yeah, and then it just gets more sour because now he's like confused. He's like, "Is this dude trying to rob me?" Like, <laughs> dude, when I saw this video, I think I saw this last night, dude. I was legitimately crying tears. Hey, wake up, dude. Wake up, dude. <laughs> Wake your ass up, dude. <laughs> <laughs> that is terrible. I saw a bunch of videos about uh, sleeping last night when I was... Uh, when you were sleeping? No, I was. I should have been sleeping. I didn't sleep last night. When you called me earlier, I uh, I was taking a quick little nap uh, to get you myself together. It. I did need it. Bro, I was so bad. Uh, oh, we got... It. One more. Oh, we got two more videos. So, do you want to see? You want to see a huge fail, or do you want to see a huge druggie? Uh, isn't that both failing? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. We'll go with the druggie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, uh, what's going on here? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> All right. Uh, all right. <laughs> all right. I guess you have a nice day, sir. Like, <laughs> who flosses their ass on a nice early morning in the uh, middle of a uh, looks like a shopping district? <laughs> probably someone who's pretty fucked up who probably lives out of that car that he's walking past. Uh, that's my car, dude. What uh, are you doing? <laughs> you get you let homeless guys live in your car? <laughs> Occasionally. <laughs> hey, dude. Five bucks is five bucks. All right, I see. <laughs> they pay you five bucks, or you give them five bucks. I give so them five bucks. So now you're letting them sleep in your car and buying them a meal. <laughs> he let me use his floss. Oh, that's <laughs> understandable. <laughs> it's worth five bucks, I guess. <laughs> we are all booty flossing. <laughs> oh, I know what's going on right here. I got kids. <laughs> 
Yeah, you almost made it. Oh! oh. Like, dude, you. That goes uh, straight proud papa moment to, uh, dude, you kind of fucked up right That there. hurts so bad, doesn't it? Right. Right when he got to the home stretch. This that's how poor I feel, kid, dude. That's how I feel life is, though, man. Always in the home stretch is when you're going to fuck it up. He like, learned a lesson early where he could recover, hopefully. Uh, yeah. But His that balls is may a, not drop. That's but. a direct hit. Oh, yeah. Battleship direct hit. Yeah, that's oh, good. Oh, God. You can hear the the echo through his body of that bar oh, yeah, like, slamming his little fucking. <laughs> but at that point, like, I don't know when you're that young, I don't think like they're that big. So it's not like a, I don't think probably that took the brunt of the force. I think kind of like, I don't know. I'm not talking about no little kids junk. That's not on me. <laughs> 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 I can't tell you this, dude. When I was a teenager, so uh, I used to hang out in the street with a. There was a bunch of kids. We were all a bunch of bad kids, right? And uh, there was this dude, AJ. He was a little older than us, and we used to pick on him and stuff. It, but it, we would hang out with him because he would. Uh, he was a customer, okay? Right. And. Me and my best friend Jeff, who were, who were in his pet, <laughs> were in his driveway, and Jeff had like the the old like ghetto basketball hoop, the one you could roll around, oh yeah, and stuff. And we're hooping in in his driveway and just messing around, we're freestyling and playing music and stuff. Right. And uh, AJ comes <laughs> walking by Jeff's house, and he screams something. I I can't remember exactly what he said, but he is talking shit, and Jeff's like. Oh yeah, and do AJ's like yeah. So Jeff just whips a basketball and it hits this dude dead square in his junk, and it was so loud. Like you, you know the sound when you stub your finger in a basketball. Uh, where it was like boom. yeah, where it jams your finger. Yeah, and it, it makes that weird like echolocation noise, like boom. Yeah, dude, he did that to this dude's junk, and I swear to God, he fell out and started crying, and this dude was like. He was a bigger dude, and he was older than us, and Jeff drilled him right in the junk with a basketball as hard as possible. From, like, 30 yards away, dude, it was crazy how he, like, he was like Tom Brady with it. It was crazy. Nice. He should have went pro. He (laughs) should have went pro. Jeff (laughs) is a pro. Like, that dude's done miraculous things that that I've seen in my life. (laughs) And it's just like, this reminds me of that because this kid got taken out. Oh, <laughs> I wish the video went a little further on so I could see how bad that kid was really hurt. Like, uh, you know, sometimes do you really want to see a little kid hurt like that. Like, well, no, <laughs> I, I'm wondering if like he fell down and dude's like, oh, and then the kid bounces up and he's like, oh, man, that kind of hurt, but I'm all right. Uh, I've yeah. seen kids take them injuries. Well, that's what I'm saying, too. That's why I don't know if at that age, like that is that like. That hurts like it does now, because I think you know what I'm saying. Like, yeah, I, I, I totally agree. But those are a uh, video segment. That's the stuff I curated from the internet. We'll go back to uh, some of our last news stories to finish up the show. Um, right here we have Brad Pitt, according to the ScoopUpworthy.com. Brad Pitt let his elderly neighbor live on his $40 million property rent-free till his death. Damn, son. Says Elvira? Elvira, who is that? Uh, I, that name's darkness, super... Uh, if you don't know Elvira, look her up. Big-ass titties, queen of darkness. The she's queen of actually, darkness, uh, she was... Uh, she's actually a real... She's actually really a redhead, and she's actually a like really good-looking chick. I think with the wig and stuff, I think she never... Like, I never really was for me, but... Yeah. That's her. Yeah, but like underneath all that, she's like a hot redhead chick. She's a redhead, huh? Yep. And, I never uh, knew that. And uh, if you ever saw the movie, she got the little poodle that's like dyed all the different colors. Uh, I can't remember like what his name was, but I used to see she's redhead chick. <sighs> wow. Dude, night and day difference. Uh, yeah. I never knew this. And even her hair like that looks bad. It's usually all like straight. Like... <laughs> I think 80s hair on anybody. I think 80s hairstyles were just bad. I'm glad we left them in the 80s. Oh, God. That's what I'm saying. Like, right oh, there. Oh, like, wow. Yeah. Dude, that is crazy. 
the makeup and wig does a lot. Yeah. Like, you can barely tell that that's under there. You know what I'm saying? Oh, wow. Like, <laughs> she drives that, like, convertible. I think it's a Cadillac with the little poodle with all different colors. I like Elvira. She used to be, uh, my dad used to watch her as kids. Like, she did the late night horror. She was a late night horror host. Yeah, and didn't she also do the Adams Family or something? Uh, I don't think so. No? I'm not sure. I mean, I don't know my my Elvira history for sure, but I, I don't I swore she was I on something like that. that. Like uh, the original Adams family. Maybe I, no, that wasn't her, huh? Are you talking about Morticia from Adams Family? Yeah. That's no, not no, her. no, not not Morticia, her mom. Oh, or was Morticia the old lady that was married to uh cousin yeah, it? No, the suave the, the dad was the suave dude with the pencil yeah, mustache. Gomez, right? Gomez. I know I know Adam's family like Yeah, maybe I got it wrong. Maybe I got it wrong. That stuff was way before my time, so <laughs> give me a break, internet. Because even now, uh, Star, she watches uh, Adam's Family all the time. The one with uh, Adam's Family 2 with like the little baby. Oh, yeah. Gomez, the little mustache thing. Like, <laughs> she gets a kick out of that shit. Check this out. Brad Pitt's enormous Los Angeles estate had a special guest. A 59-year-old Academy Award winner purchased uh, there regarding Brad Pitt. He purchased this 1.9-acre property in 1994. For one point seven million from Elvira, the mistress of dark, <laughs> star of, uh, star Cassandra Peterson. Yeah, that's her name, her real name. Oh, that's what it is. Yeah, he maintained ownership of the property for thirty years before finally selling it for about forty million in twenty twenty two. Uh, Peterson Elvira recently spoke about how she sold her home to Brad Pitt. And became his longtime neighbor, and how the star had an unexpected tenant in his property. Look at this handsome guy. Uh, so handsome. <laughs> speaking of him, have you? I didn't watch the special yet because I don't have Netflix. Okay. But uh, Tom Segura, when he was touring, I did go to Tom Segura's one of his when he came to Cleveland. Yeah. I seen Tom Segura on his uh, "I'm Coming Everywhere" tour. And, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and it was what was the foundation of this special he just put out on Netflix. And I saw the clip of him talking about meeting Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt came to see his show. Okay. And he talks about how he was like, he was like, man, like I couldn't even look this dude in the eyes. And it was He's the first time beautiful. I ever felt gay. <laughs> he was like, <laughs> he talks about like kissing him and shit. It's super fucking funny. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Like, dude looks like a classy dude. <laughs> dude like, in, in Tom Segura's joke he says he says Brad Pitt's like you want to kiss me he's like yeah <laughs> but let me ask you a question are you are you going gay if you met a rich bachelor that wanted dudes you were like this dude got money Brad like, Pitt no not even Brad Pitt just a rich dude like are you going gay for a rich dude I don't know <laughs> I, I dude I honestly like I, I I'm not I don't think uh, you stumbled over your words a lot. You were thinking. A little bit. A little bit. Because, like, dude, I ha I do have a man crush on, like, Brad Pitt, Leo Decap. Uh, who else? I got I got a bunch of them. Uh, uh, we were just watching a movie. Uh, Mark Wahlberg. Okay. Like, those are, like, my man crushes. Beautiful men, yes. They're, they're, like, those are, like, respectable, super handsome dudes. Right. You know but what I'm are they your crushes in a... Uh, sexual way or just your no, crushes I as could like just... you look up to them as men and you're calling them crushes like a girl would. Yeah, kind of. Uh, okay. Well, I've had girls tell me like, oh, that's your man crush, blah, blah, blah. So I just ran with it. Like, uh, I guess they so. They say that, but yeah, but you're not looking at him like, yeah, I want his like, penis. Like, like I, I totally blow this dude. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, I, I don't know if it's about that, but what if they came to you and they were like, you're so beautiful. You might as well be my wife are you gonna are you gonna get in, into a marriage with them get you some of that money or are you passing up the money because i mean all you gotta do is just do some butt stuff every once in a while and you're rich <laughs> no so I, that's kind of a hard you know like, i don't think i could dude that's a that's a carrot they'd be dangling <laughs> literally I, it, look check this out this is a <laughs> you want to eat my full honesty uh, here we go. Yeah, okay. i don't know if i want okay, it but so, we're going so, get it so i i'm in i'm in uh I'm going to Phoenix later this month. So I'm at Phoenix and I'm hanging out at this casino and Brad Pitt approaches me. Okay. And he says that. He's like, he's like, oh wow. Like you, you know what? You're 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 a handsome guy. He's like, you know. He runs up and says, 
run away with me on my yacht. Yes. <laughs> yes. He's like, hey, you want to come to my yacht? So I'm like, dude, totally. I'll go. I'll come over in your yacht. <laughs> so I come to the yacht and it's just me and him. OK. <laughs> yeah. You're like, oh, shit. I'm so about the yacht, I'm trap. like, dude, I really thought there was going to be like bikini babes here. You're Brad Pitt. What is going on? Yeah. He's giving them creepy eyes. But I like... don't but I don't say nothing. You know what I'm saying? I'm just thinking this internally. Okay. <laughs> so I'm sitting there and I'm enjoying like some lobster with some like fucking uh with with some of that garlic butter and the lemon, you know what I'm oh, saying? Oh yeah, you know, I'm enjoying the life. life. Yeah. Champagne, Fuck like yeah. the most expensive kind. And I'm not even drinking out of the glass. I'm just drinking a bottle of champagne, right? <laughs> <laughs> and he, and he starts like throwing his move at me. He's like, you know. A lot of people they they think of me in this way, but I think I could like make something with you. Oh yeah, we could have this life together. I think I would turn him down, right? You'd be like, ah, uh, but I would act like, like <laughs> I would act like very schoolgirlish, like well, I have to go back to my apartment because. I, it's getting hot in here, isn't yeah, it, right? That would definitely turn him off if he was trying to get dudes. So I feel you go with that. So 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 I'm like I'm like it's getting like really. I think I'm having like a heat stroke or something. I got to go to the hospital. So I leave him right on the All yacht, right. and he's All watching right. me and like from the side of the yacht as I'm like walking across the dock into the distance, right? Yes. I would think he hates about to that. See you go, but he loves to watch. He you loves. <laughs> Because <laughs> I got them cheeks, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I seriously think after that moment, I would turn him down and I would continue my vacation and come back to Ohio. And I I would come back and I would always wonder what my life would be if I would have been gay <laughs> with Brad Pitt. Right. And I, who knows? Like, maybe damn I, it, I should have tried. I could have yeah. been. I could have been that. Like, because <laughs> you know what they say? Like, you, you don't know. What you like unless you try it. Don't and I've knock never, it till you try I've it, never, bro. I've never tried to be gay. So how do I know if I don't like it? Uh, I, I don't know. But I also feel like I'm not trying to find out. Like I've never seen a dude and got turned on. Uh, yeah, me either. I mean, uh, oh, I don't know if I have. Like That's why I do. <laughs> but I do believe the argument that like you're born that way. See, I don't. I, I don't know if that's true or not because I've never had like. Why? Uh, tendencies. You uh, don't think that people like naturally like dudes or females naturally look at the same sex ever since they were younger. Like when I realized uh, I loved women was super early in the 90s. I wasn't even a teenager. I didn't even have pubic hair. I agree with that. But then when you say that you're born that way, then maybe what like trans people are saying is true. And we should be mutilating our children. You know what I'm saying? Like. Well, because that's yeah. the whole problem with it is yeah. like when you're that young, you shouldn't have uh, you shouldn't have any kind of tendencies yet. Not till you hit like puberty. I but even like. when I was younger, like uh, one of my first crushes was uh, Topanga, along of with course, everyone yes. else. Everyone yes. loves Topanga. Yes. Um, Household name. Why wasn't it Sean? I sh he was a beautiful man. I'm sure there was a lot of boys back were, in the day. He was on the cover with the, they all had the little swoop, dude. He had like, the the, the part. Hair. He yeah, had the super like the part. part, the center. Yeah, the, the center part in the, in the fucking. That was the that thing. Show came out and I'm sure 90s. there was a lot of boys that were my age that were like Sean's it. Uh, but I didn't look at Sean that way. He was he was a badass on the show. I was like, that's my dude. You but know what I I'm looked saying? at like, Topanga that way. We both did. Oh yeah, dude. I still look at her that way. Me too. Yeah. I follow her on Instagram. Oh, I, I wish I could. I don't have an Instagram. I but. diddle myself like fucking twice a week to it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, hey. Topanga. It's the truth. <laughs> However, anyone chooses to get off is on them. I don't. <laughs> yeah, but like I, I kind of do believe that you're like you're born with that. Like if you are into men, I think it, you naturally have that. And you know, I don't want to make it sound like I'm definitely against that line of thought because anything is anybody can be whatever the you fuck make they a good want. point. Like, though. I care. Like you make a very good point though. Like if you it, if you believe that people are born with that, then maybe it's right that. You can't have one without the other. Yes. So, like, if people are born and they think, oh, I was actually supposed to be a female, then the transgender thing is right. as real as somebody being born uh, gay or queer. Well, and I don't know how it goes when you're in a household 
like say my stepson or something came to me and he was like, I definitely want to be a she, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, at first I'd be like, I don't know, but if somebody keeps saying something and keeps showing tendencies towards something, then maybe that is true. Yeah. But if he did tell me that I'd be like, I understand. And you feel like you're trapped in a body. Like I'm not going to cut your dick off, dude. When you get 18, you cut your own dick off. That ain't going to be on me because if you think you need that, because they're saying a lot of these people do it and then instantly regret it. You know what I'm saying? And like, yeah. Wait till you're a grown man and you can make your own decision. It's like reverse trans transgenderism or something that it happens very. It's becoming more popular as the transgender. Oh uh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, social thing, which uh, grows with it being so in the media and so in your face. There's gonna be a lot of people right now making mistakes, and I think that's the biggest problem is that it it's so like everybody just wants to do it because it's like trendy you know or whatever yeah. and then you're gonna have a lot of people yeah. those are all the people that they find that right-wing people find to um you know bash like trans well and that's stuff. how you get attention as a youth these days uh, and that too and that plays into it that's why i say, like if he wants to do it by all means go ahead when, when you're, you're an adult man yes when you're an adult you're allowed to take control of your own life yes right now <laughs> i'm supposed to take care of you Make sure that you're good enough so that you're ready to leave the nest when you get old enough to. A scary thing about uh, that is and that I'm not going to be held responsible for. I keep hearing that CSB like that. gets involved in these situations now. That's a, I keep hearing this, and I don't know how true it is, but that is something that I'm repeatedly hearing is that CSB is getting involved when a child keeps on claiming that, like, oh, they won't let me. Uh, get the hormone blockers or whatever. See, but I don't think that's right either. Because that's I don't not think right. Anybody should have like any, any say over that until you you're there to raise your children. The parent is the and, the boss. Yeah, and of course, if you wanna if you wanna do that, just wait and see. If you still want to do it when you're 18, then by all means, just like no different than my parents telling me I couldn't get a fucking tattoo. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, exactly. Like exactly when I got caught smoking cigarettes when I was a little kid. Right. They, they was like, you're not an adult. You can't do that. Yeah, exactly. Like, they tell you what you can't do because you're a kid and you need some guidance. Like, yeah. that, that's the the most pivotal point in your life is being a child growing into, you know, going through adolescence and stuff. Like, uh, nobody needs all that extra drama or stress. Like, if you feel like that, you get there. Like, one day you cut off your penis. I don't care. Pitt slowly increase <laughs> back to Brad Pitt. <laughs> oh yeah, are we going to <laughs> back to back to my baby, uh, Brad Pitt? <laughs> Brad Pitt slowly increased the footprint of the property. She said, uh, "Elvira said, I think there were like twenty-two houses that were contiguous, right? Is that that word? Contiguous? Uh, that is it. To the edge of the contagious? property. Contagious? Like I don't know. I'll just fuck with you. Yeah, I think that's contiguous." Uh, to the edge of the property, and every time they came up, he bought one. So he just kept buying properties on this street to make a gigantic fortress. Nice. Uh, he was very, very kind to the husband. His wife passed away. And uh, oh, hold on. One of the properties was owned by an elderly ma- an elderly man who was in his nineties. So Pitt finalized the deal with the man and allowed him to stay in that home. The way that you made the story, the way the headline made the story sound, like these, these like he dudes moved were sitting, the guy in. These dudes were sitting on the couch, fucking hanging out, you eating know. popcorn, watching yeah. movies and shit. Yeah, like, Brad's like, check out this new movie I just made, bro. Like, <laughs> come on over here, Bubba. <laughs> like Brad rolls in drunk in the middle of the night, and dude's like. <laughs> You know you weren't supposed to stay out this late. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you waking me up yeah, this right. early? <laughs> <laughs> you know I'll be dead soon. Like <laughs> Pitt finalized the deal with this man and allowed him to stay in their home. He was very, very kind to the husband. His wife passed away, and the husband, John, lived there. Uh, I know that Brad allowed him to live there without paying anything until he died. Okay, so that's what the deal is, is that Brad Pitt bought this guy's house. He basically gave that dude a reverse mortgage. Yeah, he bought his house out. It was like you live there, you, yeah. you you're die at any point here, right? And uh, and then Which I'll turn first, this house into a continuation right. of my mansion, right? Like, 
<laughs> I'm just going to connect it to the rest of my block. When you're dead, this will all be mine. He <laughs> just says that to him every day. <laughs> Brad Pitt's such a boss, dude. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to some more news uh, Then the show Aaron Rodgers calls out a former Packers teammate For being fat and lazy <laughs> Damn <laughs> So he done moved to the Jets And started talking shit about his former teammates Yeah he's talking about Brett Favre Look at this handsome guy He's also another one that You know he You think that is dude He's a handsome dude I don't know I'm, Look at him I might be passing And he's like a Super Bowl uh, champion yeah, I mean, the money's there. I'm down for the money I get. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hold on. Aaron Rodgers has fat shamed one of his former Green Bay Packers teammates, sort of. The veteran quarterback was very keen on leaving the Packers last season, but he probably had second thoughts when he realized he was going to have to leave David Bacardi or uh, Bacatiari. Man, you got some hard words to read today, obviously. Yeah, back at, David back back Beccatiari back. behind. He didn't want to leave David Beccatiari. Aaron and David had a great friendship with both of them sharing a fascination for conspiracy theories. <laughs> of yeah, course. and then he called him fat afterwards. <laughs> I guess they had a falling out. And he's poked some fun at the offensive tackle, suggesting he's probably laying around getting fat. Oh, this uh, is a bullshit story. So we're going to move on to another uh, story. Yeah. That was him just having fun with not his that, friend. Not that any of this. Oh, this is uh, Dennis Rodman getting his cheek tattooed. Yeah, we already talked about that. <laughs> yeah, we did. Let's move on from that also. Damn, we need to vet the stories, man. Dude, I didn't have time. It, I understand. Disney su- uh, Disney star dead at 48 by apparent suicide. Wait, is that uh, <clears throat> Jen- uh, Ashley Tisdale? Who was that? No, that was not Ashley Tisdale. I couldn't uh, see from here. <clears throat> So according to the dailycaller.com this girl what was she on cuz I don't I don't know if I've ever seen that girl I know my Disney girl Lena Nasir Disney was at its high point when oh, I was Lena a child Oh Lena Nasir is the reporter famous singer Coco Lee Coco Lee The star of the Mandarin version of Disney's Mulan Ah uh, that's why you why I don't know cuz it's a different version Yeah of it's something. a different country stuff Gotcha well that sucks sorry to hear that no. Yeah it kind of sucks <laughs> Not only did she bring us joy with her songs and dances in the past 29 years dang she was uh she was Mandarin's uh Disney star for 30 years dude She also worked hard to break new ground for the Chinese singers in the international music scene and has been doing her utmost to shine for the Chinese. All right, I'm starting to lose a little more uh, love for her. (laughs) (laughs) You're like, she's a sympathizer. (laughs) Come on. We're we're not fans of bricks over here on Noel That (laughs) Live. Or are we? (laughs) We actually kind of are. (laughs) Waiting for the crash of the dollar. (laughs) Yeah, so R.I.P. to uh, Coco Lee. Uh, I, Lee reportedly attempted yeah. to take her own life at home on Sunday. She was rushed to the hospital where every effort was made to save her life. She slipped into a coma and passed away three days later. She was very famous in Asia and credited her talents for the Oscar-nominated song, A Love Before Time. Oh, that classic. Yeah, dude, <laughs> which was featured in the movie Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Oh. Oh, so she had some credentials for real. You're like, oh, a movie I like? She was in that? Like, <laughs> yeah, uh, sorry, China and uh, Coco <laughs> Lee and the family. Her yeah. sister said uh, she had been struggling with depression for the last several years, had sought professional help uh, to work through her troubles. They noted that Lee's condition deteriorated drastically in the recent months, and she ended up attempting suicide. She didn't attempt. She did it. All right, well, let me ask you a question, How did she though. do it, though? That's what I'm looking for. If if somebody's uh, committing suicide, <clears throat> uh, should you resuscitate them? Because it feels like they already want to be on the way out. Like, you know, that it's against their will that you're going to bring them back to life, I feel like. Well, not to end the show on a very sad note. Oh, but, no, uh, we, we've already done. <clears throat> this has been a train wreck the whole time. We talked about politics. <laughs> we talked about being gay. Like, there's a little something for everyone. Like, uh, so... <laughs> Back when my buddy, uh, uh, oh man, 
So, uh, Dirty Red. Mike, Mike, yes. uh... Why am I forgetting his last name? I don't know I've been if having... I've ever known him. I just know him as Mike or Dirty Red. I don't know. Yeah, Dirty Red. My boy Dirty Red. It's better to not put out his uh, whole credentials anyways. Uh, my boy Mike Dirty Red, he, uh, he did a suicide with a bunch of us friends in the house. And... Uh, Ooh, my voice is cracking. It's yeah. very sad. It yes. was crazy to see a, a suicide and stuff, and I got a lot of love for you, Dirty. Uh, when he did it, I was the only one that was in the correct state of mind to be able to get people to call the ambulance and the police. And then when the police showed up, they thought that there was an active shooter in the house. So I had to jump uh, in front yeah. of like police that were going to... Uh, they were drawing their weapons on me. And I'm like, look, this was a suicide. There's not a shooter in the house. The shooter needs your help. Get the ambulance here. Yeah. And when we pulled him out, they they started working on him and got him in the ambulance and stuff. Long story short, when he got to the hospital and stuff, he couldn't speak because he shot himself in the face. Right. And uh, he wasn't able to speak when he got back out of surgery. But I could see the the he was still his brain was still there. Yeah. So I sat down with him and I started showing him a Facebook thread that was for uh, uh, about him. Yes. And he snatched the phone out of my hand and read through the chat and was looking at what people were saying about him. Yeah. And I I talked to him. I was like, dude, you know, we love you. I don't know why you would do this. I'm sorry that you feel this bad. I did talk to him. He right. was a two-term Marine vet. Yeah, and he I'm, saw a lot yeah. of stuff. He told me a lot of things about what he happened was a good in the dude Marines. For sure. like, Super good definitely dude. Definitely will be missed. Give the shirt off you, off of his back yes, for you. And always. also he would like he would go to war for you. For sure. Which he actively did on two terms. He spent eight years at, at war with yeah. Afghanistan and Iraq for us. So the dude was the ultimate protector and he was like an ultimate friend. And I had that feeling. In my mind, when I was talking to him, I could see it, that he didn't want to be resuscitated. He didn't want to be in the hospital. Exactly. He went to end it, and it didn't work. And I think it was more demoralizing that he had to suffer a few more weeks. He ended up uh, falling out through, he got a common cold, and his brain was so damaged they couldn't take it. Yeah, and that's that whole thing had to be horrible that it ended like that. I think, like, when it happened... Uh, he, you should just let him go. I don't have the balls to commit suicide. And I've I don't thought either. I've thought about it. You know, a lot of us, we, a lot of us with depression, I suffer depression. A lot of us in America do. And a lot of my peers do. And a lot of my family does. But, you know, I, I've come to grow up and realize that I'm just not going to do it. I'm right. just going to take life on the chin and I'm going to die of natural causes or something random. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't have the balls to do it. He did, and I wish that it worked, honestly, because he had to suffer a whole nother month. Right. And I had a, I had a neighbor growing up. Uh, she was about the same age as I was, and she would keep trying to commit suicide over and over and over again. Slit her wrist. Her mom found her. They put her in the psych ward for a little bit. She got out, ate some pills in the bathtub. Her brother finds her. And just over and over again. And I. Uh, how old? Uh, that was when I was like 12, 13 years old. No, how old was she? Same age, like around the same age. She was uh, my sister's age, so maybe like a year older than me. That's so sad, man. Yeah, and at that point. And then now, but now she's tried to do it so many times and stuff, and she's, she's made it out of it somehow. I don't know how you try to kill yourself over and over and over, and you just like, you can't. She's obviously here for a reason. As a youth, though, you're very impulsive. When when my my buddy Dirty Red did it, he was an adult. Yeah, he had, he had already lived a whole lot of life that I couldn't even imagine. Right, you know what I mean? He, he the stories he told me about Iraq and Afghanistan, I couldn't even imagine going through it. Yeah, like that shit would be horrible. I'm I mean I'm glad I never had to go through it. I thank everybody who who has. Like, thank you for your service or whatever. Honestly, but. for real, from the bottom of my heart, thank you for your service. If you have served and uh, this month was for you and Memorial Day was for you. And, it, you know, I, I got the utmost respect for everyone in service and all of our veterans that are back and still struggling. I, I really hope that you guys find the help you need. 
Oh yeah. And uh, you know, it's it's just I agree with you. If if you're like a twelve year old, I I don't think it would be the right choice to be like, oh, they're trying to kill themselves. Maybe they should just go through with it and right. it works. But as an adult, <clears throat> when you see an adult actively trying to just put an end to the suffering they're going through. Yeah. You know, sometimes that it, it, it I don't know. I mean, your body your choice, right? Right. I don't I don't pretend to know everybody's struggle or I don't have to live through whatever they're dealing with, you know, so I couldn't really say whether I should save you from yourself or not. Like if you can't handle it and you're taking yourself out, it's not really for me to be like, "Oh, hey, like let me try to stop this." Yeah, it, it really is a shame. And People have to find value in themselves, you know? Yeah, it's, it's crazy. But with that being said, you know... Um, <laughs> and then on a real serious note, like... <laughs> 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 how do you even joke about that? As soon as you make a joke, like, instantly canceled, like, why would you say that? Like, <laughs> there's nothing that you could say that would be joking that wouldn't be over the line about this situation. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> we love you, Dirty Red. That's <laughs> hey, shout out the the Dirty Red and uh, you know my boy uh, David Smith. I miss you so much, man. And uh, you know both of them guys. They they served for us for our freedom and stuff. And I uh, I love you guys and everyone else that has served. And I love you, Jared. And I love everybody love that watches too, the man. podcast. In a total straight way. <laughs> <laughs> and I love Brad Pitt. In a non-Brad Pitt and way. I, I love Aaron <laughs> Rodgers. And I love Leo Decap. <laughs> and, and I love all of you and all of our peoples. And I love everyone at Redline. And we will see you next week on No Outlet Live. Peace. God damn it, now my sound effects board is all fucked up. We'll see you next week. What's up? Jay Remy here, host of No Outlet Live. Are you considering or curious about how you could start your own podcast? Join Anchor. Anchor has everything you need to make a podcast for free. Monetize your podcast, one-click distribution, record from anywhere on the app, and they have unlimited free hosting. Download Anchor on the App Store or Google Play. Anchor, podcasting made easy.